So you need a MacBook for school. You want something simple, but you don't want to pay, well, MacBook prices. Because sometimes Macs are just a little bit too expensive. But what if I told you that there was a fully supported MacBook that you could easily get for just $400 that does everything you need to for school and is one of the last upgradable Macs with fully user accessible storage? You'd probably call me crazy, right? But that's just the thing, that MacBook does exist. In fact, it's right here. So grab yourself a coffee and settle in. You're watching the $450 Facebook Marketplace Mighty MacBook Air build project. Hello there, Brady here, and today I'm going to be showing you why this 2015 MacBook Air that I got off of Facebook Marketplace for just $400 and then upgraded for an additional $50 is an excellent value for college students like me or really just anyone looking for the ultimate ultra-budget, ultra-portable Mac laptop. <sighs> that was a mouthful. So remind me tomorrow at 9 to make the part 4 script a lot less wordy. Yeah. Anyways, let's go ahead and talk about exactly why I bought this. For those of you who have been around for a while, you probably remember the video I made this past summer about why I bought a Surface Pro 4 in 2020 for college. I absolutely loved my Surface, and it was the most portable laptop that I've ever owned, and the i7 paired with 16 gigabytes of RAM could more than knock out just about any task I threw at it. Basically, it was a pretty good Minecraft killer. But for someone like me who owns an iPhone, an Apple Watch, an iPad, a MacBook Pro, and yes, a fully upgraded modified 2009 Mac Pro, go check out the video on that if you want in the cards right there, it's got like a lot of views. The lines begin to blur a little bit. Don't get me wrong, I love the hardware of my Surface, but when it came to the software, every other computer I owned pretty much ran macOS. So this kind of created a sense of discontinuity for me and caused some problems like when I needed to transfer files or work on projects for school across devices. It just kind of created a little bit of a headache. Essentially in 2020, an ecosystem is like the force. It surrounds all of your devices and binds them together and creates a perfect balance. Also, it does let you use AirDrop, iMessage, and FaceTime on all your devices, but I like the force analogy a little bit better. For that reason, I went ahead and sold my Surface Pro 4 to a family member and began looking for an equally priced macOS alternative. That's when I stumbled across this MacBook Air on Facebook Marketplace. It was exactly the kind of deal that you would want to look for. A mother a couple states over was selling her daughter's barely used college laptop, simply looking to make some money back on it and not really looking to make a huge profit. It was local pickup only, but I messaged her and offered to pay a little bit extra for shipping and insurance, and voila! This near mint condition 2015 MacBook Air arrived on my doorstep just four days later. Now, there's a couple of very specific reasons why I went for this exact model MacBook Air down to the year and everything, so let's go ahead and get into a couple of those. It features the classic unibody design that Apple used with all MacBook Airs from around 2011 all the way to 2017. So it's proven, has plenty of up-to-date ports, and is free of those pesky butterfly keyboard switches. It still astonishes me that the Achilles heel of a $2,000 MacBook Pro from 2016 all the way to 2019 is a bag of goldfish. However, the internals are still new enough, being from 2015, that it still enjoys full software support from the latest version of macOS Big Sur from Apple. Also, just a quick subnote, the 2015 and 2017 model MacBook Airs are nearly identical in pretty much every way, with the only difference being that the 2017 model MacBook Air has a slightly upclocked processor from the same generation. The 2015 features a 1.6 GHz Core i5, whereas the 2017 features a 1.9 GHz Core i5. Same processor generation, doesn't make much of a difference. If you find a better deal on the 2015, do that in my opinion, more worth it. Mine came with the pretty standard 1.6 GHz Intel Core i5 paired with 8GB of RAM and 128GB of flash storage. This may not sound very good on the surface, but I found 8GB of RAM on a MacBook like this to be totally fine in 2020. 
Like I always say, just don't open up 1 billion Chrome tabs and you'll probably be fine. The storage though is a little bit of another story. 128 gigabytes on a laptop is not nearly enough for someone like me. But that's where this specific model MacBook Air stands out from the others. The storage drive itself is actually very easily accessible. All you have to do is take off the bottom panel and from there it's fully upgradable. All you have to do is purchase this specific adapter and when I say this specific adapter, I mean this one because other adapters have had some tricky stuff going on, but this one is very reliable, proven by a lot of people, including myself. So it will be linked down below if you'd like to grab that. Next up, all you need is an NVMe M.2 SSD. In my case, I went with a 500 gigabyte Crucial P1 SSD for increased speed, storage, and decent power efficiency. That will also be linked down below. Um, I've had a great experience with Crucial products before and this SSD is no different. So grab that below if you want. I'll also have the forum post and links that I used to do my research in preparation for this down below. So feel free to check those out. First, I went ahead and cloned my current system running off of the 128 gigabyte SSD onto an SD card. From there, it only took me around 30 minutes total to open up my Air, replace the SSD using iFixit's handy step-by-step -step guide, and close it back up to boot. Also, keep in mind that I really don't have much repair experience, like, at all, so if I can do this, then you probably can too. Just be careful, do so at your own risk, I am not responsible for anything that happens to your device, so please just be careful, and you'll be fine. Once that was closed up, I went ahead and plugged up my MacBook Air, pressed the power button, and held down Option to select the 128GB SD card that I cloned my original system onto. So basically, I cloned a drive onto an SD card and booted off of the cloned SD card. Maybe don't do that specifically, but it worked, so yay. Once the cloned version of macOS that I had made earlier booted up, I went ahead and opened up Carbon Copy Cloner and used that program to clone the clone onto the new drive. Basically, I ported the copy onto the new drive. Hopefully that makes sense. Also, highly recommend purchasing Carbon Copy Cloner. It has saved me so much time and so much heartache with the Mac Pro and pretty much every Mac I've ever owned. From there, I went ahead and restarted my MacBook Air and took the SD card out and it booted from the drive and that was it. The new drive also reaches much faster speeds than the original one did. Let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of benchmarks. Also, just a heads up, there are a couple of quirks with things like battery life and sleep with older model 2013 and 2014 MacBook Airs, so that is another reason that I specifically went for the 2015 because it has a newer version of the firmware which allows it to be fully compatible with no issue as it was from the factory with NVMe SSDs. So basically, if you have a 2013 or 2014 MacBook Air, do a little more research before you attempt this kind of upgrade, but if you're in the market for an Air looking to do this, go for the 2015, it's going to save you a lot of time and heartache. Then I went ahead and partitioned my 500 gigabyte hard drive in half and used Bootcamp to install Windows 10. Because why not? Now I can use all of my favorite programs in macOS but also boot into Windows for more necessary ones like Lockdown Browser and Zoom that I need for school. What I'm left with now is the perfect combination of reliability, portability, and flexibility in a college laptop. It may not be quite as versatile as the touchscreen and pen setup of something like a Surface Pro, but it runs macOS, and Windows for the matter, usually lasts all day battery-wise, and can be upgraded with whatever size drive your heart's content with. Side note, I really want to see one of you guys throw a 2TB NVMe one of these things, because who wouldn't want a 2TB MacBook Air? I mean, it's just hilariously overkill. Totally unnecessary, but definitely worth it. Also, if you want to see me do something like that in the future, um, use my Amazon affiliate links down below and I earn a commission off of that, with, off of anything you buy with no extra cost to you. And I might earn enough commissions to just maybe make that video. Don't get me wrong, it's not the most powerful laptop out there by any measure. And I certainly won't be doing any kind of 4K video editing on this guy anytime, like ever. But for things like a little bit of casual web surfing, iMessage, AirDrop, Zoom calls, and booting into Windows 10 for the occasional lockdown browser appointment, the value here is pretty good. Now let's go ahead and talk about my recommended specs to look for if you want to attempt this yourself. 
Personally, I recommend shopping around on Facebook Marketplace. Websites like eBay are still good for looking for used MacBooks, but in my experience, I've found that they tend to gouge you now more so than give you a good deal. Look for at least a Core i5 paired with 8GB of RAM and nothing less than that, in decent shape and do not pay over $400 for it. Storage capacity doesn't matter though, as I showed you, because these are fully upgradable, so don't be fooled by higher prices of the 256GB storage models. Just go for a 128, save the money, buy yourself an NVMe, you'll get way more storage and you'll get a way better deal. Also, if it's a local pickup only option like mine was, if you offer to pay a little bit extra for shipping and insurance, nine times out of 10, I've found that they'll just ship it to you at that point, so it's totally fine. Just be reasonable and be willing to pay a little bit extra for that and you'll probably get it. Also, for this price point, some of you might want to spring for an older 13-inch Retina MacBook Pro instead. I honestly wouldn't blame you if you found a better deal on one, so if you do, go right ahead. The screen on this MacBook Air definitely isn't something like a higher resolution retina display, but for most tasks like video and web browsing, I've found it to be totally fine. I also went for this 2015 MacBook Air over an older retina model because the specs are a little bit newer and it's a little bit lighter. So it's more portable and it's probably going to get a few more years of software support than something like an older retina MacBook Pro. Like I said too, the screen on these Airs isn't really that bad. The 13.3 inch 1440x900 display certainly won't be winning any awards anytime soon, but I found it to be bright enough and way better than the older screens they used to use in the pre-retina unibody MacBook Pros. So unless you're pixel peeping, I really don't think you're going to notice a difference in a day-to-day -day basis use. Also keep in mind this is coming from someone who uses a 28 inch 4K monitor like all day. It doesn't bother me and it probably won't bother you. Funny enough, it's also gotten to the point where I usually reach for this MacBook Air first before getting my Retina Display 15-inch MacBook Pro. Trust me, that extra weight in the 15-inch models and the Retina models makes a lot more of a difference than you would think. It also has MagSafe, and if that's not a selling point in 2020, I really don't know what is. So with all that being said, should you buy a 2015 MacBook Air in 2020? Personally, I would say definitely. These machines are rock solid and have stood the test of time, and honestly, in my opinion, they probably have many more years of life left within them. It definitely isn't the latest and greatest, but for a machine of this price point, it's not really meant to go up against something like an M1 Apple Silicon MacBook Air. Instead, it's meant to get you from A to B, while still giving you a arguably very premium experience for a decent amount less cost. You can also still dual boot Windows on this, which I can't say for an M1 chip equipped Mac. But for around just $450, I got a great laptop for college that goes everywhere and gets everything done while still fitting into my Apple ecosystem and laptop bag quite nicely. So for now, I'll keep on using this glowing Apple logo decked out in stickers from many different coffee shops I've traveled to for a few more years to come. Because sometimes it's not the latest and greatest that matters most, but rather the tried and proven path that follows it. And that is why I bought and built a 2015 MacBook Air in 2020. All right, guys, that is going to do it for today's video. If you enjoyed it or found it helpful, leave a like down below and let me know. Are you considering getting a MacBook Air like this for yourself, or maybe just upgrading the storage like I did? Or do you have any questions in general about this build? Leave a comment down below and let's have a chat about it. Also, consider dropping by my subreddit r slash clipplaytv if you have any more in-depth comments, questions, or suggestions. Also consider following me on Instagram at RealBertyJordan if you want to keep up with me more on a day-to-day -day basis. Finally, if you want to hear more from me, definitely consider hitting that big red subscribe button and bell notification icon next to it so you can always be in the know when I upload new videos. And as always, see you in the next one. You're watching the $450 Facebook Marketplace MacBook Air build project, part one. I can't open it. I, I literally can't open this. That was, that was bad. This production was shot in the shoals.